On our planet, there seems to be an infinite number of beautiful places one can visit, with an equal number of spectacular things to admire. It requires nothing more than a curiosity to observe what is all around you. The miracle of nature manifests in countless ways, from breathtaking vistas to the simple movements of a common heifer. The purpose of this program is to present you with the extraordinary diversity of our miraculous blue planet so that you can discover these things for yourself. Today's journey in search of more miracles of nature brings us to the Missourian Lake District, which is an impressive water world in northeastern Poland. We will then trade in the cool Baltic region for the tropical Caribbean. Here we will prove that it would be wrong to link the Cuban province of Guantanamo only with the famous American naval base. To wrap things up, we will return to Europe's Mediterranean region to visit people of the Lipari Islands who continue to survive in the shade of ever-smoldering volcanoes. If you think this is the surface of an unusually calm sea, you're wrong. What you see is the surface of a lake in the Missourian Lake District, Poland's most expansive in the northeastern part of the country. It's a renowned destination for all those who love water sports, fishing, and hiking. Despite their popularity, they and their surroundings remain pristine as a result of careful management. The lakes are a part of the catchment area of the rivers Pergola and Narwa. Altogether, the total surface area of this river system is 40,000 square kilometers, interconnected by 11 canals, as well as several rivers and streams. Water and footpaths lead through the Missourian Conservation Area a home to the gray heron and many swans. A multitude of birds may also be observed in conservation areas on the Lake Kisanyo on the islands of the Nidzitsa Lake. The Dolpsk Lake serves as a cormorant reservation. The water's quality is renowned and ranks among the cleanest in Poland. For this reason, the water swarms with fish that attract hundreds of eager fishermen. Pike, perch, zander, the lakes are a fisherman's encyclopedia. They are everywhere, near the shore, in the reeds, on open water. The only thing off limits is disembarking on one of the islands designated as a bird reservation. The beauty of the surrounding nature is in stark contrast to the reality that the northeastern part of Poland was an area once fought over by Prussia and Tsarist Russia. Its history is one of conflict and war. This half-forgotten German bunker is a reminder of World War I. It's almost been 100 years since it was hit by an artillery shell. The forest is struggling to hide its ruins and with it, the bloody history of the Missourian Lake District. And there is still plenty to hide. The Third Reich headquarters for Eastern European operations was situated in these woods. It seems as though the concrete monstrosities resist the relentless flow of time. In the Wolf's Lair, as the infamous bunker of the leader was called, Adolf Hitler spent 800 days, and here he survived an almost successful assassination attempt under Operation Valkyrie. The building where the bomb exploded no longer stands. The Nazis destroyed it themselves. Let us pray that in the future, only people with more peaceful intentions shall inhabit this lovely region.
The Missourian Lake District is well known not only for its vital military history and its water world. The largest mammal of the old continent, the European bison, lives in local game parks. This huge animal is a relative of the American bison. Together, they share the sad fate of animals that were nearly exterminated. 90 bison are being looked after in Volisk, of which only seven live in paddocks, and the rest roam free all over the reservation. They seek out humans only in November when they can't manage to find sufficient food. Nature is preparing for the arrival of winter. Because the region around the Missourian Lake District is the coldest in Poland, life literally stops until next spring. It's high time then to find some sunshine, which ought to be easy in our next destination. Let's travel to the sunny Caribbean, to Guantanamo. Guantanamo lies in the very east of Cuba. Upon hearing the name, most people think of the American naval base. It was established over 100 years ago and was leased by the Cuban government to the United States for an unlimited period of time. Above all, Guantanamo is a province with a capital of the same name. While the naval base stands on a swampy piece of land a little over 10 by 10 kilometers, the total surface area of the province as a whole is over 6,000 square kilometers. Around half a million inhabitants live here. They, like their compatriots elsewhere in Cuba, experience the effects of the country's communist doctrine summed up by the slogan, socialism or death on a daily basis. Cuba's original inhabitants, the native Indians, no longer live on this freedom island. Most were slaughtered by Spaniards and the rest succumbed to infectious disease. The last Cuban Indians lived at the end of the 19th century right here by the river basin of the Yamuri River. The river makes its way to the sea through steep rock walls, which at times rise 150 meters high. The resulting gorges are among Cuba's most romantic and picturesque natural sceneries. The table mountain seen here is known as El Yunque, which stands for an anvil in Spanish. It's a fitting name. Many crystal clear streams flow from its sides. The actual name of the province, Guantanamo, comes from the Tain language and stands for a country in between rivers. Can you believe that chocolate grows in these trees? Indeed. The journey from the state of fresh cocoa beans to a bar of the much-loved delicacy is not an easy one, but the result is well worth it. Cocoa beans are harvested all year round. The beans are bought by a local chocolate factory that was co-founded by a figure of the Cuban Revolution, Che Guevara himself. Here the beans are cleaned and ground into cocoa powder. The mountain road offers an amazing view into the surrounding natural world. In the biospheric reservation of Sierra del Purial, vegetation of all kinds thrives. Cacti, wild beans, as well as Cuban orchids. If you're lucky enough, you can also spot a quickly moving hummingbird. Inaccessible coast lies near the town of Imias. It was here that many Cubans threw themselves into the waves 
and struggled to swim to the distant American naval base. Many drowned due to bad weather and strong currents. The rest were captured by the Cuban Coast Guard. The American naval base lies in swampy terrain at the mouth of the Guantanamo Bay. The bay and its surroundings are no man's land. Regular Cubans are unable to approach the base due to barbed wire and blockades. Tension is in the air, but a truly fiery atmosphere can be felt on the Lipari Islands lying in the shadow of volcanoes in the Mediterranean. The Lipari Islands are a volcanic archipelago in the Tyrrhenian Sea, north of Sicily, and belong to Italy. The archipelago is made up of seven large inhabited islands and ten smaller uninhabited ones. The legend has it that the Greek god of the wind, Aeolus, once lived here. His name is recognized in the Italian name of this archipelago, Isole Aeole. The locals distinguish the different types of wind and each has its own name, Levante, Ostro, Maestro, Tramontana, but the islands are renowned particularly for the volcanoes. There are 13 in total. Six are beneath the surface of the sea and seven rise up to the heavens. The islands have their own specific charm, despite the volcanoes and the winds, each appealing in a different way. The main island, Lipari, has about 5,000 regular inhabitants. During low season, it is relatively peaceful. Come summer, the streets resemble beehives. The locals don't mind though. After all, tourism and gastronomy is for most of them the main source of income. When it's time for siesta, the streets calm down and tourists have the perfect opportunity to get to know the local architectural gems. Cantaro, a little window once used for placing the chamber pot, is without a doubt the most interesting one of all. God of fire, Vulcan, is said to have lived on the island at one time. He supposedly worked in the Hephaestus Forge. His helpers were the one-eyed Cyclops. The island is ideal for the observation of all sites associated with volcanic activity. Thanks to some of them, Volcano became a renowned spa resort, and the local mud called Fango has healing properties. Even though it may look it at first sight, the water isn't boiling hot. It's just that sulfuric vapors are bubbling to the surface. It's these vapors that are known to be beneficial to the lungs, attracting people from near and far. Sulfur is everywhere. The locals are more concerned with the shortage of fresh water, though. It has to be brought over to the Lipari Islands aboard special vessels. It's then pumped into the central water tower 
from where it travels to reservoirs below houses. may wonder what led people long ago to inhabit these apparently inhospitable and dangerous volcanic islands. Some came because of obsidian, a type of volcanic glass that was used early in the Paleolithic era for making spear points and knife blades. It is actually sharper than the best known steel and is used for cardiac surgery scalpel blades. Long ago, potter's clay was quarried here as well. The highest peak of the island is Gran Cratere o la Fossa di Volcano, which rises to a height of almost 400 meters above sea level. Together with the volcano on Stromboli, it is a favorite among the tourists. Currently, it may be referred to as inactive, but the locals leave nothing to chance and so have a monitoring system on its slopes. The station is equipped with a camera system and geochemical sensors. Volcanologists can predict a volcanic eruption two days in advance and therefore can also warn against the danger of tsunamis. The decor of the monitoring station is quite stylish. Local rocks and minerals are displayed in showcases, obsidian, sulfur, and other igneous rocks. Life on the Volcano Island is not for everyone, but despite the potential danger, to many, it has an undeniable appeal. Filicudi is the epitome of peace and quiet in comparison to the smoldering volcano. Here the tourists aren't frightened by smoky ravines on the slopes of a volcano. On the contrary, here they find true calm interrupted occasionally by ringing bells in the local church tower. The island is crisscrossed by footpaths and trails where one can stroll for hours, meditate, or observe the local flora, which is beautiful and fragrant. It's a place where rosemary, sage, thyme, as well as wild pepper thrive naturally. The local volcano is now dormant and nothing will revive it, but judging by the massive layers of igneous lava, this volcano was once very active. There is no longer any real danger of an eruption, but there are still places on this island where life hasn't fully resumed. The village of Tsuko Grande was evacuated after the Second World War and people are returning very slowly. Once, if the archaeological findings are anything to go by, 
This was a very lively place. Ruins from the Bronze Era at Capo Graziano are 4,500 years old. While the buildings succumb to the flow of time, the breathtaking vistas will remain forever. The highest peak of the archipelago is 962 meters high and lies on Salina Island. Unlike the other islands, it's covered by a thick pine forest. Its name comes from salt, which has been extracted here since time immemorial. The natural lagoon is filled with seawater, which evaporates and what remains is pure salt. Malvasia wine thrives on Salina, and caper lovers will appreciate this island also. These unopened buds of the caper bush are literally found on every step. Just put on an apron. Each of the Lapari Islands is special in its own way. The most striking of all, however, is undoubtedly Stromboli, which erupts constantly. Due to its conical shape, the Greeks called it the Rounded One. The local people only refer to it by the word Idu, which stands for he in the Aeoli dialect. This volcano has been spurting lava regularly for the last 3,000 years. It's the only active volcano of its kind in Europe. Stromboli is relatively harmless. Its lava emerges at 400 degrees Celsius, but it usually flies straight up in the air and falls right back into the crater. Life so close to a volcano crater is not particularly easy. Sometimes it literally rains mud. Volcanic dust is everywhere. Life in the shadow of a volcano looks dangerous, and it can be, but it's also eminently interesting and ultimately beautiful. People who live here simply stop noticing these strange meteorological occurrences just like their stomachs got accustomed to the wild ride aboard the hydrofoils that connect the different islands.